Hi, welcome back to TUTV. I'm Parker. And I'm Catherine, and obviously you can see we're maskless for the first time since, well, since I've been at TUTV, actually. Yeah, so, yeah. kind of a, a very special episode. Um, <laughs> you can see all my flaws, so just st don't look. <laughs> yes, cameraman, don't zoom in to <laughs> either don't. of us. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, also interesting, this is a special episode after a very special week. Last week was Bucket List Week at TU, which was basically just a bunch of uh, essay sponsored events, mm. but the big one was they had a squid game themed event. Yeah. And uh, the most interesting part of that is the signage was very unassuming. Oh, really? Yeah, you would, you'd assume like that would look super intense, like have like the shapes, you know? Mm. It, it just was called Goldie's Games, <laughs> and it was posted in like one like email. Like the PG version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so you just expect it to be super normal, but um, no, it was super, like, they gave us, like, canes at the beginning and put us into... I could smell that. So I yeah. have practice, so I can, I can participate. And all I could smell was those canes. I was so jealous. Dang. But, yes, yeah, so that's all we've got time for right now. Enjoy the rest of the show. Hello, welcome back to TU TV. I'm Christopher. And I'm Ethan. We've got some great stories this week, so let's jump right into it. In response to what President Vladimir Putin has called an aggressive statement from Ukraine and NATO countries, he put his nuclear forces on high alert this past Sunday. With tensions rising between Ukraine and Russia, experts and defense ministries are struggling to figure out what Putin's plan of using nuclear forces could entail. Pavel Podvig, widely considered a leading expert on Russian nuclear forces, tweeted that Putin's orders meant, quote, the nuclear command and control system received what is known as a preliminary command, end quote. This would turn the system on in effect, allowing a launch order to, quote, go through if issued, end quote. Most nuclear forces specialists believe that the threat of nuclear attack on Ukraine is low, but they will be looking over Russia and Ukraine for additional safety. Parents of transgender children in Texas are reeling after Governor Greg Abbott issued a directive telling, quote, licensed professionals, end quote, and quote, members of the general public, end quote, to report parents of transgender minors to authorities if it appears those children are receiving gender-affirming medical care. Jenny Lawson, who writes for the popular blog The Bloggist and who has a non-binary child, stated in an interview that, quote, it's chilling. It's terrifying for kids who now fear that their parents might be taken away from them and jailed if they support them. It's terrifying for parents who fear that caring for their trans children will result in them losing their children, end quote. A bill that sought to criminalize parents for seeking gender-affirming health care for their children was proposed last year as well, but failed. New York man Juan Hernandez of Uniondale won the New York's lottery $10 million deluxe scratch-off game this month, claiming the grand prize the lottery uh, said. Hernandez said in a statement that, quote, I'm still trying to spend the 10 million I won in 2019, end quote. He opted to cash out in the lump sum totaling 6.51 million after required withholdings. The lottery said in a statement that, as of its publication, there were still three top prizes left on the $10 million deluxe ticket. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention updated masking guidelines Friday, suggesting 70% of Americans can stop wearing masks in the United States. About 28% of people in the U.S. live in an area where masks should be worn indoors, according to the CDC. Dr. Nina Radcliffe told the National Desk Jan Jeffcoat that, quote, as Omicron cases have been dropping and states are already lifting mask restrictions, the CDC has taken steps with the shifting metrics to provide guidelines that can be used with practical implications as most Americans are getting to learn to live with the virus, end quote. Judge Katenji Brown-Jackson will hold meetings with top Democratic and Republican senators on Wednesday, a White House official tells CNN as the confirmation process for the president's nominee to the Supreme Court gets underway. Democrats are likely hoping for a swift and bipartisan confirmation process for the U.S. District Court judge, who would make history as the first black woman to sit on the Supreme Court. 
Senate de Democratic leaders hope to have a vote confirming Jackson to the court by mid-April. Since former Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer has announced his retirement, Jackson has been considered a front-runner for his spot, according to CNN uh, journalist Jeff Zellini. So, let's talk about this $10 million lottery prize. Mm -hmm. What would you do with it? Because I know what I'm doing with it. <sighs> I, I want to pretend like I'm one of those people who'd be like, oh, I got to save and invest it, but I'd spend it all on something stupid for sure. Yeah, I'd spend it, you buy more lottery tickets. Just statistically Genius. speaking, your odds go up the more lottery tickets you buy. Mm -hmm. Because it's like one in a million, but if you buy another lottery ticket, then it's like two in a million. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you just keep buying lot, and like he's got what, $6.91 million, mm -hmm. you can buy like 6.91 million lottery tickets at that rate. So it's just like the math on it is just like, dude, I mean, he didn't, he won it twice. So it's like, it's that's true. the way to go. So that's all we had this week. We'll talk to you next week. Stay cool. Hi, welcome back to another TU TV interview. Today we're doing a senior spotlight with Cloris Espinoza. That's me. Hello. <laughs> so can you, you tell the people a bit about um, your, you know, your major? We'll start with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I am a media studies major, um, and I'm minoring in. It was English and anthropology. Now it's just anthropology. Awesome. So uh, what made you choose um, to come to TU? Um, so TU had kind of been in the background for me like my entire life, um, or well, up to a certain point. Um, my great-grandfather went here, um, and just like a lot of family friends also talked about TU. Um, it's known for being like a great school locally, um, and it's smaller, and that's something that I think I really benefit from. So yeah, I decided TU. Okay, awesome. So presumably you're from Tulsa then? Um, not really. I was born in Santa Rosa, California. Um, it's like an hour north of San Francisco, um, but I've been here since I was like five. So like practically my entire life, yeah. Awesome. Uh, how did you first start getting involved with uh, TUTV Media Lab? Um, so I went to my first activities fair and I signed up, I don't wanna start a feud, but I, I signed up for a particular uh, student organization that did not respond to me uh, and then I got caught up in media lab stuff so oh. yeah it was kind of like this wasn't really what I was like going for but they're the ones that you guys got to be first so what was the other organization um, the collegian uh, I declined comment <laughs> no we, we can we can bleep that out, Just bleep it out. Yeah, yeah it was the so. collegian oops oh whoops um, cool and so what's your current position in the media lab um, so I am actually the director of the podcast studio, um, and I was the entertainment producer for TUTV for, what, like two years, I think. Um, so yeah, I started off as an entertainment producer, was doing podcast stuff on the side, um, and then became the director of the studio. Awesome. Let's see, if you had to choose one, what would be, and I know you can't, uh, what would be your favorite TUTV or Studio 151 memory? You, you know I can't pick just one? Okay, that's no. funny because I actually, I can't <laughs> pick just one. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to say, I think filming Penguin Boy was honestly True. my favorite. Um, I, I get kidnapped in it. Um, and, and the person who kidnaps me gets arrested at the end, so it's not endorsing crime. Um, sure. But that was just a lot of fun, um, and I think it was a really good team. Um, and yeah, I think that really just like kicked off my love for TUTV. Yeah, I would say same. Um, <laughs> not to go on a <laughs> tangent about that, but yeah, like editing that and kind of like coming up with it on the spot, mm -hmm. that was pretty fun. Yeah, I would say that like Penguin Boy, um, that whole series kind of, I mean, this is kind of tooting our own horns here, but I yeah. think it really encapsulates what TUTV and the Media Lab is all about. For sure. Yeah, yeah link, link in the description, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, cool, do you have any plans after graduation? Um, so right now I am interning at a uh, public relations agency and I really, really like that. Um, so I am hopefully going to be sticking with that post-graduation. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just like, I think I definitely got this. I think I definitely, I definitely got that internship because of um, my work with TUTV and it's a nice kind of like integration of like new stuff versus things I'm already familiar with and like doing like writing content. Awesome. Do you have anything else to, to say, good or bad, about uh, 
to UTV or the studio? Um, I'm <laughs> glad that I had one year without Jack Zico. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, yeah, you know, he, he makes um, he makes hosting look so easy um, because, you know, anyone in comparison looks great at hosting. <laughs> <comparison>. <laughs> Kidding. Jack, you're awesome. Um, you kind of look like him. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, discount Jack or maybe Jack is discount me. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Jack is awesome. Uh, Cloris is awesome. Thanks for talking to us and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Hello, welcome to TUTV. I'm Joe McCurdy. And I'm Sam Moody. We've got some great stories for you today, so let's get into it. Tulsa's men's basketball lost to ECU 59-64 last Saturday. TU lost at home to ECU 71-73 earlier in the season. In the first half, Tulsa shot 68% on field goals and 64% on three-pointers to lead 36-34 at halftime. The two teams went back and forth to start the second half, and ECU took a 51-49 lead with 8 minutes, 11 seconds left in the second half. ECU held the lead for the remainder of the game, while TU shot just 25% on field goals in the second half. TU closes out their season with two home games before heading into the conference tournament. Tulsa women's basketball beat Wichita State 61-49 on senior night last Sunday. The win put an end to TU's three-game losing skid. Tulsa pulled ahead 9-7 with 5.02 left in the first quarter for their first lead of the game. They then finished the first quarter with an 18-12 lead. Despite only scoring eight points in the second quarter, Tulsa led 26-22 at the end of the first half. However, Wichita State took a 45-44 lead early in the fourth quarter before Tulsa finished the game strong, backed by Yvette May Mayberry's 15 points. Tulsa's final game of the season comes against 25th ranked UCF this Wednesday. Tulsa's men's tennis lost to Texas Tech 4-1 last Saturday. TU came in to the duel ranked 28th in the most recent ITA rankings. Tulsa won the doubles point with wins at the first and third double spots. Despite TU's early lead, Texas Tech won four straight singles matches to win the duel. Texas Tech won at the second, third, fifth, and sixth single spots in the win. Connor DeMarco and Cody Pearson improved to 3-1 in the duels at the top double spots. With the loss, Tulsa falls to 7-4 on the season. Tulsa women's tennis lost to Memphis 2-4 at home last Sunday. Tulsa came into the duel ranked 19th in the most recent ITA rankings. TU won the first two doubles matches to take the first point of the match. Memphis won the first two singles matches before Tulsa's Leanne Benedici won the fifth spot to tie the duel at 2-all. Memphis won the duel following the wins at the third and fourth single spots. Benedici improved to 4-0 and on the season across the fourth and fifth single spots. Tulsa will look to bounce back this Thursday at home against North Dakota. Tulsa women's track finished third in the AAC Indoor Track Conference Championship. TU's Chloe Hirschenau won the 5,000-meter race with a time of 16, sec 16 minutes 42 seconds while teammate Caroline Miller finished as the runner-up with a time of 16 minutes, 43.1 seconds. Tulsa's Katrina Persendorfer won the 3,000-meter race with a time of 9 minutes, 27.697 seconds. Hirschenau sc scored her second podium with a 9 minute, 39.55 second time to finish third at the 3,000-meter race. Tulsa's Kelly Jones had a third place finish in the mile race, and the distance medley relay team finished in third to pound out TU's podium finishes. TU will complete the next in the NCAA Indoor Championship March 11th and 12th. So we've got a lot of Tulsa news here, but I feel like we need to discuss the elephant in the room, which is the MLB lockout. Yes. So uh, Rob Manfred just announced that the uh, opening day, which is usually April 6th, uh, will now be canceled. Uh, and, you know, social media, Twitter, it's, it's blowing up right now. And it's really unfortunate to see uh, after a season where they had 60 or so games canceled because of COVID, and now they've got uh, their opening closes, which is really unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, this has been going on for about three months, so yeah. we'll have to see where it goes from here. Yeah. So that's all for this week, folks. Thanks, guys.
Hello, welcome to TUTV. I'm Jacob Gailey. And I'm Julia Grantham. We've got some exciting stories for you this week, so let's jump right into it. The James Beard Award Foundation has announced its 2022 nominees. Among the national award nominees are Tulsa Bar Valkyrie and Utica Square Staple Polo Grill. They are nominated for Outstanding Bar and Wine Program, respectively. Located in Depew, Oklahoma, Living Kitchen Farm and Dairy was nominated for Outstanding Restaurant. Andrew Black, head chef of Oklahoma City's Gray Sweater, was recognized in the Outstanding Chef category. On a regional level, the head chefs of Tulsa restaurants Orin Evelyn's Basque Cicero's and Rindang and Company Indonesian Bistro were nominated for the Best Chef Award in the Southwest Region. Winners will be announced at the Restaurant and Chef Awards ceremony on June 13th. The Caped Crusader returns to the silver screen this weekend with The Batman. This marks the character's first solo film since Christopher Nolan's 2012 The Dark Knight Rises. The Matt Reeves-directed film stars Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, and Paul Dano as the Riddler. With a runtime of 2 hours 56 minutes, The Batman is the longest film ad um, adaptation of the comic ever, surpassing the 2 hour 45 minute Dark Knight Rises. Early box office projections predict that The Batman will earn between $135 and $185 million within the first three days of release. The Batman opens everywhere on March 3rd. Alternative singer-songwriter Mitski has generated concert etiquette discourse after asking fans to limit phone use during her performances. The washing machine heart hitmaker took to Twitter on Saturdays to suggest that concerts are best enjoyed when audiences don't watch through their phones. The artist stated, people filming entire songs or whole sets makes me feel as though we are not here together. This comment gathered, garnered praise from fans, but also a backlash that resulted in the statement's removal from Mitski's social media. Mitski is currently on tour promoting her latest release, Laurel Hell. Russian conductor Valery Zhurjiv was replaced by Unique Nize Sigen um, for the Vienna Philharmonic's concert series at Carnegie Hall last weekend. Zhurjiv's removal was the result of mounting political pressure after the Russian invasion of Ukraine on Thursday. Although he had not commented on the attacks, Zhurjiv is a noted friend and supporter of Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Zhurjiv's silence may result in more severe consequences for the conductor. Currently, Zhurjiv serves as the chief conductor for the Munich Philharmonic. However, the Philharmonic has stated that if Zhurjiv refuses to recant Putin's actions, he will be relieved of his position. As of Sunday night, Zhurjiv has yet to comment. Comedian John Mulaney hosted Saturday Night Live last weekend with musical guest LCD Sound System. In light of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on Thursday, Saturday's show eschewed the traditional cold open for a performance of Prayer for Ukraine by the Ukrainian chorus, Dumka of New York. This powerful tribute was followed by Mulaney's opening monologue in which he addressed the January 6th insurrection, his battle with addiction, and the birth of his son, Malcolm. With his appearance on Saturday, Mulaney joins the likes of Steve Martin, Tina Fey, and Paul Rudd as five-time hosts. Mulaney is currently on a nationwide tour for a show titled John Mulaney from Scratch. So, going to a concert without being able to use your phone at all, that sounds crazy to me, so. I mean, I, under I think her point was maybe more for whole songs or the whole set, people who like to live stream performances. Personally, when I go to a concert, I have a one song policy, which is that I will only film portions of a single song and then the rest, maybe a couple pictures, the rest of the time I try to keep my phone away and that's just so I can stay in the moment. So I do understand Mitski's ar argument a bit, but I also understand. I mean, we'll have to see where it goes with people now putting phones in lock cases and all those types of things for concerts. But it seems that's all we got time for. So I'm Jacob Gailey. I'm Julia Grantham. We'll see you next week. Awesome. So uh, are you planning on watching the Batman movie anytime soon? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. I, I really want to. I mean, it's a long runtime, though. Yeah. Maybe three hours. Yeah. That seems to be like the, the trend now. I've eaten a lot of so. snacks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a fan of Robert Pattinson, actually. Mm. Um, I watched Good Time, which is a movie with him. It was awesome. I have not actually seen the Twilight movies. I was movies. about to ask that. Yeah. No? Oh, that's I, I've, heard of, I've heard all about them. He was in um, Harry Potter, too. Did you know that? Yes, yeah, that was also I liked great. him in that. Um, yeah, for the brief a bit more moment. tanned, less vampire-like. Yeah, so. true. That is yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> but also the food places, all the places in Tulsa being nominated for awards. That's pretty great. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, um, I mean, we had a Taste of Tulsa on campus mm, recently. Yeah, that was Yeah, amazing. that was awesome. Yeah, it just... 
It was basically Costco samples of all of the coolest restaurants at, at Tulsa. I so. had to stop halfway around because my tray got so full. I was like, yeah. I have to eat half, then go again. Yes. They were playing Ratatouille in the basketball stadium, so it was really nice just to sit and eat lots of food. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. That, that was that combined with, uh, yeah, the the Squid Game event I went to. Like, the yeah, TU programming has not been better. I'm... Yeah, Huge they're doing fan. a really great job, actually. But yeah, what are your favorite restaurants in Tulsa? Ooh, um, there's this one called Cyan I really like. Oh, which, I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's really good. Um, it's sushi, mostly. Um, I love sushi. And yeah, it's so good. It's also pretty cheap, too, but it's like, it's the best sushi I've ever so had. So it's sushi on a budget. Yes, exactly. Uh, well, great for a student. Not, not like not cheap, a... not like, you know. Yeah. Th like, no shade at Sushi Blue. I eat there all the time. I love <laughs> Sushi Blue, but it is, it's better than Sushi Blue. Oh, wow. So, yeah. That was a big claim. It is. Yeah, it's quite the claim. That's a dangerous claim to be making, <laughs> actually, on campus. But yeah, anyway, yeah. thank you so much for watching. That's all we have time for today.